So I sent this letter, James Jones. I'm on the phone with James Jones. He goes, "Yo, man, um, I I got your I got your tape, and 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 man, you really got some 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 talent there. You know, some stuff that I feel I can help you with and develop. But you definitely got some 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 hot tracks." And I was just blown away. And he goes, "I usually know what he said. I normally we said we have a box in our office, and we throw anything in this box." Because of, I guess for lawsuit or protection, where we thought he goes the unsolicited but, stuff. He said, I'm he, said, he said, but something told me to open this one up. Something told me to open this one up. I, I'm, I'm, when I get through this story, you're gonna be blown away. So he goes, "Can you come to my office tomorrow?" Tell my dad. We go to New York. We we at Uptown Records, bro. I'm in Uptown. I'm looking around. I'm in a record company. It's my first time in a record company, and I'm looking around like trying to see if Andre, and then I got a glimpse of Andre Harrell and all of this stuff, man. I knew all of these people because I, I read Word Up and Bit Back Beat Magazine and all of that. So I was like on it. So James says, I'm starting uh, we're, I'm starting this in-house production company and I want you to sign with, I want you to be part of my team. Woo! And he goes, 16 years he goes, old. 16 years old. He goes, but he goes, can you, I, I would need you to, I would need you to drop out of high school and live with me. Right? He goes, and my dad, like, was like, let's think about this. And we took the whole ride back, on that bus back to Jersey. And my, and, and I was like, dad, I don't know if this ever, could, this going to come again. Like, this is here. Like, this is the opportunity. And my dad was like, you're right. Let's go with it. I told the lady I wouldn't be back in May and I wasn't back in May. I moved to Hackensack, New Jersey. Literally the next week, I moved to Hackensack, New Jersey with, with, with James Earl Jones, stayed with James Earl Jones in his two-bedroom apartment at Hackensack, New Jersey. And my first session with him was with Horace Brown. I ended up doing, we was work, I was working with Horace Brown, doing records with Horace. And then James set up a session outside of Uptown Records. He set up a session for me to work with Patti LaBelle. And I went to, New, went to Philadelphia and I did a session with, with Patti LaBelle, right? And I, now I'm in it. And I learned, to be honest, I learned a lot from James because James taught me how to put melody in track. I was making tracks, but I necessarily didn't understand the part of melody. So James, who couldn't, couldn't sing at all, but he will, you need a whistle sound. You need a sound. And I, and I would try to, and I would mess around. He'd be like, yeah, like that, like that. And I would do it. And that became some of my signature things that I started doing. I jumped over this. But in that meeting, I'm going to tell you, in our first meeting with James Jones, my dad is sitting down. It's a real part, part, important part of this part. My dad is sitting down, and my dad tells James Jones, he goes, you know, I, I, I got to tell you one thing that God just told me to tell you. And James looked at my dad like he was crazy, bro. And my dad said, God told me you're going to be a preacher. Hold on, slow down, slow down. My dad said yeah. to James Jones. So God told your dad, to in tell that meeting, Jones, the a &R director of Uptown Records, in our first meeting, our first meeting, he said, God told me to tell you you're going to be a preacher. And I was kicking my dad under the thing like, dad, stop, because I knew my dad. And, I, and it wasn't that I knew my dad. My, my dad was far from fake with it. You know what I'm saying? I knew he was real with it, but it was just like, I saw first meeting, you about to blow the whole situation. So I'm kicking him under the thing, telling him to stop. And he's looking at him I'm like, stop. And James is looking at my dad laughing. He literally laughed. Him like he got 10 heads. Like, what are you talking about? Like, yo, you, you're bugging. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. And so we moved on. That was it. Now, I'm in Hackensack. I'm working with James Jones. I'm, I'm, we doing all, we doing all these sessions. It was, it was a great time and all of that. I, I got a chance to meet Andre Harrell. I got a chance to meet a lot of Heavy D. A lot of, I think I did Nothing But Love, a remix. And like, I was moving around a lot in the city, learning New York. It was, it was a moment for me, man, like as, as, as that teenager. Um, and something happened. We weren't working together. We weren't working together again. We stopped working together. You and, and James. You and James. We wasn't working together anymore. And, um, things kind of transferred. I think Andre didn't went to Motown at some point. I all, all yep. like, Yep. Whatever. Anyway, I'm 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 fast forwarding because I want to go to this 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 part and I'll come back. One day I'm in New York City and this is like I'm probably like 22, 23 now. Like this is down the road, 24 maybe. I don't even know. Like all I know is I'm in New York City. I remember the location where I was at. I was across from EMI Publishing, right on right on uh, on Sixth Avenue of America's whatever. And 
I get a call from a 404 number and I just picked it up and it was James Jones. I ain't talked to James Jones in like five years or something. And he goes, tell your dad he can see. And I said, huh? He said, tell your dad he can see. I said, what you talking about? He said, I'm a pastor in Atlanta, Georgia now. Are you serious? Yeah, bro. And I was like, and I was in that moment. Did that was, stop you in your tracks? It stopped me so much in my tracks that I didn't believe it because I knew the womanizer and all the stuff that they <laughs> was because I was there. I was, I was there. I saw it all. So I was like, hold on. You? You a pastor? He's like, tell your dad he can see. I said, where you at? He goes, man, God bless me. I got, I got, a, I got a wife. We got a ministry in Atlanta. We took a bowling alley. We turned it into a church. Da, da, da. I said, I'm getting on a plane. I don't believe this. I said, I'm getting on a plane. I got on a plane that weekend. Went to Atlanta to visit him at his church. It blew me, it blew me away, bro. It you blew tell me, me away. God ain't real. You tell period. me God can't do it. Period, man. Period. And so... So that's that. I wanted to just tell that story because it was it was so crucial to me. Anyway, going back, seventeen years old, eighteen years old, I'm still rocking back and forth with Teddy. I'm still going down to Virginia Beach. Okay, so you Teddy. never lost that relationship with Teddy. Nah, Teddy, 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 love, loved me and, and nurtured me, but Teddy didn't want to sign me until I turned eighteen because you know minors and all that stuff. Of course. But once I turned eighteen, sure enough, Teddy was like, "I want to sign you to a contract." And he offered me uh, like a six-figure deal to sign and be one of his producers, and I turned it down. Um, I can't even tell you. I can't. I can't tell you why I turned it down. Uh, all I remember is, in the moment, I was a super fan of New Jack Swing and Teddy Riley, mm -hmm. but I wanted. To, I wanted to have my own sound, and I started developing my own sound, and I didn't want to be locked into. I felt like everybody was doing New Jack Swing and that sound down in VA, everybody that was under Teddy. For me, I wanted to have my own sound. So you're telling me, Teddy, who has been a, a, a surrogate mentor to you over the years. Who introduced me to Michael Jackson, by the way, like not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let, let's put that in the mix. Introduces you to Michael Jackson. This yeah. guy who is a super producer, has developed a sound. This whole New Jack Swing sound is Teddy. And over the years, I'm sure you dreamed of one day signing to him. When that day comes, it's it's this, it's it's this, it's your gut, it's that that inner voice yeah, and yeah. not the contract. It wasn't the business. It's it wasn't like you looked at a bad contract and said no. No, nah, my dad actually told my dad actually asked, kind of asked Teddy, told Teddy what we what he wanted. Uh -huh. and, and Teddy actually was like, okay. Like, it wasn't really a big, you know, I know he probably had some partners with him that was, you know, backing him. And it was like, okay. It wasn't the money. It was just like this feeling of, you know, I know something inside of me. I think it was something inside of me that was saying, you can do this on, you can build your own company. Yeah, but stick to so, this for one second. I want you to speak to my audience right now because I always, I always. By the way, and by the way, for me, that was, by the way, for for me, that was a power move. <laughs> there you go. There you go. No, seriously, because like you know, at 18 years old, most people, most people gonna take the contract. Most people gonna sign. They see the biggest producer in the world at the time coming off of remember the time or whatever it is, and being like, you know, they gonna be like, yo, almost. But for some reason, like the gut of wanting to build my own company, my own brand, was something that I felt I could do. I felt like I learned so much from Teddy. I was like, I could do this. I could, you know, if. If, if, if I continue and I stay focused, I can do this, right? I, I got to highlight this. I don't want you to move too quick because it, th this, this, call it intuition, call it a whisper, call it a gut feeling. We all have it. All of us. Everyone has it. You know, it's always there. But more times than not, most people do not listen to that inner voice. And that inner voice, it's always right. It's always directing you in the right direction. And the fact that, at, again, because I keep going back to your age, and, and I, I just think you're phenomenal that at this young age, you had the insight and the wisdom to listen to this inner voice when I'm sure all that you ever wanted was, I want to be signed and making hit records. And when the time came, that inner voice, God, 
So, yeah. and you chose to listen. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.